Hi, I'm Ginger Rem. Hi, I'm Martine LaDuke. We're at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve, and this is All, All About Water. Water. Hi, I'm Ginger Rem, and we're going to talk about pH today. That's uh, how the water is affected by pH. Um, we have a couple different things we're gonna talk about with that. First, I'm just gonna kinda go over the basics of pH. There is a scale that goes from zero to 14, with uh, seven right there in the middle being that neutral zone, which is ideal for most aquatic animals. So when the pH goes up, it actually is more alkaline, which they also call a base, and it can affect the fish and the animals where they may not want to eat. They may try and go somewhere else because there are things that are in the water that are making it unhealthy. Now, if the pH goes lower than that healthy seven area, uh, that is more acidic, and so it again it makes the water unhealthy and not good quality for the animals that live there. Uh, some of the things that happen is it could uh, remove the protective coating, the slime off the, the fish and the animals. It may make food not available for them to eat. And then also it can uh, affect mosquitoes even. So um, we like to keep that water at that healthy seven, that nice even level. And they call that neutral right there in the middle, so neutral. Um, and basically what happens when things get into the water, like fertilizers, pesticides, chemicals, and things that come as runoff when we fertilize our yards, it's really important for us not to do that during the summer months or our rainy season because it washes right into our, our waterways. And that can be lakes, ponds, streams, rivers, anything near your home. So you're essentially harming the water that you live around. So we wanna make sure that we keep that water nice and clean, not fertilizing during the summer or the rainy season. And then uh, if you have pets, you'll wanna pick up after them. They all have to go to the bathroom. So when they do that, you have to make sure that we do our part and clean that up. I know that's not a, a fun job, but it's definitely something that we need to do. So over here we have some common everyday things that you have at home. Uh, mom and dad may use these for cooking. Grandma, grandpa, you may have seen them use that. Uh, these are different acidic or alkaline levels, different pH levels. Uh, but you're gonna explore more with these during your science experiments in the science lab this year. So I'm not gonna tell you what these are for their pH, but I'm gonna let you find that out in your uh, science investigations. So here we have some water samples that we just collected from the creek. You wanna make sure to have fresh samples so that you're getting an accurate reading. Uh, we're gonna test pH two different ways. First way is using a pH pen, which is very simple to use. You just remove the cap, has a little glass bulb there, so you have to be really careful with that. You put the, push the power button and put it into the water and let it sit, and it's going to register the pH for us. So kind of an easy way to test that. Next one we're going to do is the little test tube with a tablet. So what we're gonna do is fill in 10 milliliters of water. We're just pouring that. Probably wanna do that outside or over a sink. And just making sure that it gets to about 10 milliliters. Adding that tablet. This is just a little blister pack, has the, pen, the little pill tablet inside of it. Cap it, and then we just invert it until it dissolves. And so remember, dissolving is just when that little tablet is not visible anymore. It's now become mixed into the water. So after you're done dissolving the tablet in the test tube, what you're gonna do is just place that right inside. And I always like to go right in the middle because then I have both color sides. Um, I can see where it matches closest to, and that is a seven, which tells us that is nice and healthy. That's cool. So as you can see, both of our pH methods for testing have come out to seven, so that tells us it's a nice, healthy environment for the plants and animals to thrive. Um, these are easy to do. You're going to see this again later in the school year. Uh, my name is Ginger Rem. I hope you enjoyed learning about pH. Remember, these videos are brought to you by Pinellas County Schools and Southwest Florida Water Management District. We'll see you next time.